Another Smart Drivers, Rick with Smart Drive Test, talking to you today about route planning. This is particularly relevant to long haul truck drivers, a little bit to regional truck drivers, but for the most part, it's long haul truck drivers. First thing about a route plan, when they give you a destination, you figure out how many miles it is to that destination, what the range of your vehicle is in terms of the amount of fuel it carries and how far you can drive on a tank of fuel. The route plan is always going to be changing. You're always going to be adjusting it. It's a little bit like when they launch a missile. The missile just doesn't go from point A to point B without being adjusted. They're constantly adjusting that missile to hit the target. And it's the same thing with what you're doing in terms of your route planning and communication with dispatch with your company about your progress from point A to point B. Next thing, it's about fatigue management so that you can drive at the hours of the day that work best for you in terms of managing your fatigue. As well, it allows you to get into rest areas and into truck stops so that you can get the amenities that you want, the amenities that you need so that you're comfortable. If you're in your truck, you're sleeping, you're living in your truck and you, uh, you can spend some time in the truck stop, you can get internet, television, you know, spend some downtime, get some rest time, maybe go to the movies, those types of things. So all of this is relevant to route planning. Today we're going to do a route plan. I've got a case study for you from Phoenix, Arizona to Los Angeles and then to Barstow where you're going to have an overnight rest to Las Vegas, Nevada where you're going to do another two pickups in Las Vegas, Nevada and then you're going to drive back to Phoenix, Arizona and we're going to show you how to do that route planning. So we're going to go over to the computer. We're going to do that. Hi there, Smart Drivers. Rick with Smart Drive Test at the computer talking to you today about route planning from Phoenix, Arizona to Los Angeles, California, where you have two drops. You're going to take a break in Barstow, California, and we'll show you how to figure out where you're going to take your break. We have two pickups in Las Vegas, Nevada, and then we're going to return to our home terminal in Phoenix, Arizona. And we're going to show you how to do this on Google Maps. Google Maps is one of my favorite tools and gives you some very precise information and allows you to route plan. So the first thing that you do is dispatch is going to give you the information. Now they may not give you all of this information at once. They may just dispatch you with a load saying you have two drops in Los Ange Angeles, California. When you get to Los Angeles, California, you make your deliveries and they say, okay, we may have a load for you in Las Vegas, Nevada, and they head you up the road. Well, by the time you get outside of Los Angeles, California, you get through, fight your way through the traffic and whatnot, you know that you're probably going to make it, you know, where the Flying J is in Barstow on your way to Nevada, and you're probably going to have to overnight there. So the first thing you do is when dispatch gives you the information, you get on the computer, you plug it into the computer. So you can see over here on the left, I have plugged in all of the information. And for the purposes of our logbook exercise, I use Heartland Express just as an example in Phoenix, Nevada, you're going to the wine warehouse and here's the address on uh, 6550 East Washington. You're also going to the wholesale produce market in Los Angeles, California. You're going to stop at the Flying J overnight in Barstow, California. You're going to pick up at Pacific Produce in Las Vegas, Nevada. You're also going to pick up at the airport, which is the McCarran International Airport in Las Vegas, Nevada. And then you're going to make the return trip back to your home terminal. When you put all of that information into Google down here at the bottom you can see that it gives you the route via I-10 Interstate 10 West that is approximately 943 miles so the first thing that you know about 943 miles is that you know going into Los Angeles California you're going to be able to run about 500 550 miles so you know this is going to be a two-day trip so you're going to be gone overnight so you're going to overnight somewhere outside of Los Angeles California you know that because it's 943 miles so you know it's going to take you two days you're going to be gone two days that's the first thing you're going to know because you're going to average about 55 miles an hour and on a daily mileage According to U.S. rules and regulations, you're going to be able to drive 600 to 650 miles. So that's the first thing that you know. And then you take the details and you can click down here on the details and it will give you the details for each one of your drops. So it'll show you how long it's going to take you to drive from Phoenix, Arizona to the wine warehouse in Los Angeles, California. And that is five and a half hours. Now, what I recommend is, is that you add about 25% on that time for a commercial vehicle. More so if you're heavily loaded at 80,000 pounds or 
you're running through mountains. If you're running through mountains, it's going to be even longer. This is so six to seven hours is probably a good average for how long it's going to take you to drive from Phoenix, Arizona to the wine warehouse. So you know it's going to take you six to seven hours. If you know you don't want to run into congestion, this is the other thing that you need to think about what time in the morning is congestion. So you probably want to arrive in and around Los Angeles, sometimes around lunchtime. So how are you going to do that if it takes you seven hours? So at seven hours, you're probably going to have to be leaving Phoenix, Arizona, and I mean on the road driving down the interstate at five o'clock in the morning. So how long is that going to take you to get into the yard and get your truck ready, make sure the load's ready? Is the load ready? Is the trailer sitting there? Is it just backing under it and getting going? How long is it going to take you? Is that going to take you another hour? So do you need to be into the yard at four o'clock so you can get your truck ready, you get all your stuff into your truck hooked onto the trailer and banging down the road that will come with experience about how long it takes you to get out of the yard and actually get on the road and going down the road because you want to always give yourself a buffer of time even if it's five and a half hours you want to give yourself a nine minute buffer all right so from the wine warehouse to the los angeles wholesale produce market management office it's 15 minutes again you're going to allow yourself a buffer about 45 minutes and it can take you an hour to two hours to unload depending on the place that you get into, how long it takes you to back in, if you've been to this place before or not been into this place before. If you haven't been into a place before and you have to figure out how to get into the dock, uh, that can take up a bit of time. If you've been there before, you know where to go, you know who to go and see, and you're not sort of wandering around these places because some of these places can be pretty big. You can be in anywhere sort of seven to ten hours by the time you start heading out of Los Angeles. So you need to look for some place fairly close outside of Los Angeles. You know you're on the way to Las Vegas, Nevada here, and I just basically typed Flying J California into Google, and the Flying J, the locations of the Flying J come up, so the one in Barstow, California, and you can see that it's two hours from Los Angeles, California, where your last drop is to the Flying J, so two hours, so if you end up eight, nine hours driving from Phoenix, Arizona, making your drops in Los Angeles, then you're going to make it to the Flying J and you're going to still be within hours of service regulations. You're going to stay overnight. And then you can see that from the map here into Las Vegas, Nevada is two hours, 15 minutes. So depending on whatever time your pickup is, in Las Vegas, Nevada, if your dispatch gives you a pickup time or they start shipping at 7 o'clock in the morning or start, start shipping at 8 o'clock in the morning and you want to be there for 8 o'clock first thing, now three hours probably from the Flying J into Las Vegas, Nevada. If you want to be there for 7 o'clock, that means you want to leave at 4 o'clock in the morning. Now, can you leave at 4 o'clock in the morning? If you started driving the previous morning at 5 a.m., your 14-hour window would put you to 7 o'clock that night. The variable in this run from Phoenix, Arizona to Los Angeles, Nevada would be your two drops in Los Angeles, and they're probably going to take you an hour each, so that would be two hours. So you'd still be within your window and your 11 hours of driving once you got to the Flying J. So that means that at 7 o'clock at night, you would have to take 10 hours off duty, so that means that the earliest you could drive the next morning would be at 5 a.m. At 5 a.m., you'd still be in the Las Vegas, Nevada by 9 a.m., and that would give you plenty of time for your two pickups. So you couldn't leave at four and you wouldn't be there for seven. You'd be there between eight and nine. Pick up your other drop and then you can see here that it's four hours and 32 minutes, probably five and a half, six hours back to your home terminal. And that's kind of the way that you plan it out in your head when dispatch gives you the information that you need to do in terms of doing route planning. The first thing that you do is you look to see how far it is total. You can see up here on the information that it's 943 miles. It's a thousand miles. You know it's going to be a two-day trip. Dispatch is likely only going to give you your first drops into Los Angeles, California. Once you get there, then you contact them. You say, yes, I'm unloaded. They're going to give you your next drop or they're going to say, you know, we think we got something in Las Vegas. Uh, head up the road there and, you know, just stop for the night because you're at hours anyway and we'll confirm it in the morning or whatnot. So, uh, you're going to work with dispatch on this, or dispatch is just going to give you the whole trip. They're going to say, uh, you know, here's your drops, here's your pickups, and, you know, go and have at her. Now, the other thing you need to consider is you need to consider fuel. This is a 1,000 miles, so you're probably going to have to get fuel at some point, uh, and the Flying J is probably going to work out for you. As I said in the introduction, most trucks are either 150 gallons or 
300 gallon tanks and you want to figure it out at about six miles to the gallon if you got 150 gallon tanks at six miles to the gallon that's 900 miles so you're going to have to get fuel before you get back or you're just going to be running in on fumes so when you get into the flying j you probably want to get fuel if your company buys fuel at the flying j you'll have a card you'll be able to get in there and get fuel most places most trucking companies will allow you to fuel up the flying j so that's the other thing you're going to have to do at the flying j is get fuel as well if you got a truck that's got 300 gallon tanks on it you're going to go 1800 miles you'll be able to go that whole distance with tanks of fuel as well some of the ways that you can do your route planning and sit down and do that and that way you're going to be able to get in and out of los angeles when you're not on rush hour same thing with nevada you're not going to be able to have rush hour obviously it's not going to be as bad as in los angeles but you're still going to have rush hour that you need to think about get into the flying j they have good amenities you know you can get your television your internet access and you know contact your family and talk to them and keep your home life going as well uh, you know, good food and those types of things, lots of other things you can get at the Flying J. And probably in Barstow, California, if you wanted to, that night you go and see a movie or whatnot. But this is just one of the ways that you do route planning, and it will make your trip a lot more successful and a lot less eventful. In conclusion, route planning is for fatigue management. We showed you today in the case study about the trip from Phoenix, Arizona to Los Angeles, Nevada, Barstow, California, your rest, for your overnight rest up to Las Vegas, picked up uh, another trailer, picked up a load, and then came back to Phoenix, Arizona. Now, we also showed you Google Maps. You can drive about 600, 650 miles a day according to US regulations of driving 11 hours a day, 400 miles a day before you need to take a break, according to US rules and regulations that you need to take a break at or before the eight hour mark of your 11 hours of driving during the day. As well, your driving, your 11 hours of driving has to take place within a 14 hour window and all of that will determine that you can drive 600 to 650 miles during the day to keep within rules and regulations of American hours of service. As well, the range of your fuel. Most trucks, as I said, have either 150 gallon tanks or 300 gallon tanks. So uh, most trucks average six miles to the gallon. That's a good average. That'll help you to plan where you need to stop for fuel, how much fuel you're gonna need in the vehicle and whatnot. Because of your route plan, you know you're going to run about 50, 55 miles an hour. So you'll be able to determine where truck stops can be approximately and you're going to be able to target which truck stop you're going to be. In terms of your destination, if you're going into big cities like Los Angeles, you'll want to stop on the outskirts and then drive in in the morning because many of these places in Los Angeles, Chicago, uh, Philadelphia, they will not have parking outside of the places that you're going to deliver to. So you want to stop on the outskirts of town, get up early in the morning, and then if you have a 7 a.m. appointment, for example, you get up at 5 and then make your way into town and you'll be there first thing when they open up. For long haul truck drivers crossing the Canadian border or the American border, in your case is American drivers or Canadians, you'll be driving the border, allow an hour to two hours to be able to do that. Loading and unloading allow an hour to two hours to do that as well. Now, you're gonna have GPS. Don't rely solely on your GPS, especially if it's a commercial GPS. Make sure you go over the routes and you write down in your own handwriting where you're gonna be going in terms of route planning and then that way it's a little bit in your head. You're not relying solely on the GPS to get you there because GPS can unfortunately make us a little bit lazy. Okay, if you like what you see here, subscribe, leave a comment down in the comment section there, share the video, all of that helps us out. Head over to my website, get the checklist for route planning so you can check off the things that you need to do. You can find that over at my website, sign up for the email, all of that will help you out in terms of the route planning, especially if you're a new driver and help you get up and down the road as a long haul truck driver and manage your fatigue. You can get into the right places and have the right amenities so you can watch some television, surf some internet, get in touch with your family via social media and the internet and those types of things. All of that will make you a lot happier on the road. I'm Rick with Smart Drive Test. Thanks very much for watching. Remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Have a great day. Bye now. And make sure you get into the right amenities, get into the right places so you have good amenities.